admired from afar for a long time now. Uh, David Horowitz is with us. His uh, new book, Hating Whitey and Other Progressive Causes. And Ron Daniels is also with us, uh, Executive Director for the Center for Constitutional Rights. Now, David, let's just first talk a little bit about your book, Hating Whitey. You have made, what, with the last two books you have written, what, nearly half, half a million to seven hundred thousand dollars for um, for your publisher. Yeah, for my pub for my the publisher of those books. Okay, now uh, and for those that don't major under- New York publisher. For those that don't understand the publishing business, that is you know no small feat. A most lot of books, books don't make any money. A lot of books don't make anything. They're, so, they're, all the book book lines are carried by leading books. And they would not go near your book because of the title "Hating Whitey." Well, they told me they wouldn't publish a book with a title like that. They didn't want to offend. Um, uh, people like Cornell West and Henry Louis Gates, who are authors uh, for this particular publisher. Right. And I knew that was going to be true with all the New York publishers. There wouldn't be one that wouldn't have that. Concern. Okay, now, just to set uh, sort of a little bit of background here for people who may not know who David Horowitz is, I mean, you were a radical left-wing Black Panther kook. Well, <laughs> I beg your pardon, Sean. Well, I'll just be honest, Dad. Yeah, I mean, you are, I, you are a radical I leftist. Was, well, my parents were communists. I came by it honestly. I was a new leftist. I would... I would call myself pretty mainstream. I was not, um, I, I never picked up a gun in the 60s. I never threw a rock oh, in that, the 60s. <laughs> By definition, I guess that makes you a fairly so moderate that makes liberal me in the 60s. A more sensible. But what did you say about the burning of the bank in Santa Barbara? Yeah, I did write a cover line for Ramparts Magazine, which I edited. Um, what was that? Said that uh, and, and let me just say one thing before I say what I said. Um, this is brought up for me over and over again. The left always brings this up. They have lied about almost everything that they did in the 60s. They pretend to be idealists when they were actually America haters. They pretended to want to have wanted peace in Vietnam when they actually wanted the communists to win. They pretended to be pacifists when they were out not only throwing rocks but setting bombs. You know, uh, I, I wrote in, Peter Collier and I, uh, my partner, have written in, uh, in Destructive Generation and I wrote in Radical Sun the truth. And so my... My little crimes, uh, and I, you know, freely admit to them, are always thrown up at me. Whereas it's very difficult um, for people who weren't in the movement to find out, you know, what how uh, people like Sidney Blumenthal say uh, or James Carville were doing back um, in the seventies. All right, uh, but now let me let me just. But what I did say was that yeah. the students who burned the Bank of America did more for the environment than all the Earth Days put together. I mean, which is a very, very... Inflammatory. Inflammatory and radical. I can imagine any conservative on talk radio making a similar statement. We'd be thrown off the air now. Right, but if I had not voted for Ronald Reagan in 1984, um, I would be a full professor at Harvard. I would be... <laughs> uh, my book would be out well, there in hundreds of thousands of copies. Yeah, well, that's probably true. All right, now, uh, one of the main, uh, main premise in your book is that you object to the way in which blacks are given in this country... Uh, free reign to uh, how can to I be say racist. to in, well to indulge in what in racism. Uh, in racism. And Al Sharpton can be out there and be treated as a uh, uh, you know a uh, normal politician instead of a racial extremist and a hate monger, which is what he is. He, uh, well, David Duke is properly isolated, but the main thrust of my book is this, and that is that there is a whole industry now, a political industry, the Jesse Jacksons, the Julian Bonds, um, and uh, the gentleman who's going to be on the show with me, who make their living uh, by um, playing the race card and by inciting um, grave suspicions between groups. And that a corollary of this is uh, that white people are blamed for everything, uh, every pathology and every problem that the black community experiences. And this is, um, you know, it's reached a point where it's become ludicrous and dangerous. All right, Mr. The Day. reality is that, yeah. uh, let me just give the example for everybody. Yeah. If you look, you know, uh, the NACP will say to, too many black kids are not getting into the elite colleges and they're failing in schools. White people are, res- whitey is responsible. Too many black people are in jail. Whitey is responsible. If you look at the District of Columbia, it's a completely black-run city. It's been run by blacks for 25, 30 years now. Oh, the police chief is black, the mayor, the city council, the board of education. The schools are the worst schools in the country, even though they have the highest 
the, the most money of any school system. All right, let me bring let me bring Ron Daniels and in. I don't want to cut you short. Hang on. Black criminals because blacks are committing too many crimes. Ron Daniels, uh, why don't I just not ask you a question and let you weigh in because I got a lot of questions I want to ask you. Go ahead. Well, you know, I, I just think it's um, absolutely uh, phenomenal that Mr. Horowitz could have made the kind of flip that he's making and should uh, now talk about the tremendous amount of what he considers to be hatred of white people in the black community because that's just not accurate uh, at all. Uh, when he talks about people like Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, trying to equate them with David Duke is a, is a horrendous stretch. Uh, Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton has never, ever advocated, uh, you know, attacks against white people or uh, black supremacy or anything along those lines. And that's one of the problems that we have now with many of the sort of the right-wing fanatics like Mr. Horowitz who try to somehow equate uh, one or two isolated remarks that may in fact be problematical with the long history of organizations like the Ku Klux Klan and the White Citizens Council and others who not only right, did me, ex no, no, wait, hold on, ahead, I really ahead. need to make this statement and that is you cannot I mean David Duke is a reality as is Mr. Uh, Furrows who went out there and shot people and killed people uh, as is, the, as is uh, Daniel Nathaniel Smith, who went on the trail of terror in the Midwest. These aren't figments of the imagination. And the question is, why is Mr. Horowitz focusing on isolated incidents of prejudice and bigotry that might exist in any community, as opposed to dealing with the reality of the rise of the Ku Klux Klan that's getting ready to have a rally right here in New York City, this trail of terror by Daniel Nathaniel Smith, the, the, the Knights of the White Camellia, all of these things. I mean, it's, it's tremendously out of proportion. Well, look. Um, the, if you had read my book, Hating Whitey, you'll know that the, the first chapter deals um, with Camille Cosby's uh, comment uh, that white America taught her son's killer uh, to hate and is basically responsible for Ennis Cosby's death. Uh, this is the kind of statement that goes on not among yeah, but fringe but, but people. But Buford like Furrows is responsible for having killed a, a, a person of Jewish faith and a... Uh, a, a Korean American in Southern California. That's right. And Benjamin he, uh, Nathaniel that, Smith went on a trail of terror you know, killed the police, two black people. And, you know and, and, how many and, Koreans uh, have been killed in Los Angeles, for example, uh, by blacks incited by Louis Farrakhan and Sonny there Carson? Is, there is no such. There is no such history. You have. You well, do in fact. There is. You I do can have. Tell you, have you, that, you have tensions in certain in, in certain communities, but you do not have. Black supremacist groups. You let, let me jump for Hang on a second. No, 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 having gone hold on. Let me, of terror in this country, let me this jump in. Exist. Let me it's jump in here. Mr. Daniels, hang on. Mr. Horowitz, hang on. Let me, let me run through a little exercise you and I went through last night, Mr. Daniels, on television. Uh, and I think, for example, if I were to go and speak at a rally that was organized by David Duke, I'd be repudiated. I would not be working at WABC Radio. Um, if I endorsed well, him, I'm not I, sure that's let, the case. Let me, I mean, you've let, got people let, like let me, Bob Grant and a whole number of other people who do all kind of outrageous let me, things. Let me, let me, let me, Mr. Daniels. Their popularity seems to be quite good. Mr. Daniels, you got to let me finish a statement. Now, my other point is, I don't think I'd be working at Fox. Uh, I think I would, I think I'd be condemned by many people, and I think you would say, well, why is Hannity associating with that racist? Now, I have in front of me a whole booklet that's been put out, a special report by the Anti-Defamation League, Louis Farrakhan in his own words. And I'll just read you just the beginning. The God that taught me calls the white man the skunk of the planet Earth. He's so wicked, so filthy, God calls him the skunk of the planet Earth. This book is filled, and if you like, I'll spend an hour going through all the anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic remarks of Mr. Farrakhan, all the racist statements of Mr. Farrakhan, but yet so-called well-respected leaders like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton show up at his Million Man March, endorse him, support him, and speak at that. And as David Horowitz puts forward in his book, uh, there is a double standard. Well, and people like Jack Kemp happened to applaud the Million Man March, and there were a number of leading Republicans who wanted to sit down and meet with Minister Farrakhan I, to talk about I, I, his conservative approach But that's approach not the point. The what is issues. the difference? Well, what is the I, difference? I, I, and why you won't condemn Farrakhan. Jack so obviously Kemp, you must think Jack the white Kemp man is the skunk of the planet Earth. I don't know. Jack Kemp applauded the Million Man March. Deal with that. Jack Kemp uh, was wrong. I'll deal with it. talked about the fact that they applauded the Million Man March. I, Jack in terms Kemp of was wrong. Using the things that were associated Kemp, with it. Jack Kemp was uh, wrong. Know, one of the problems is the, um, I, I don't know what it is among white people, they're incre particularly white liberals. So Jack Kemp is already a white liberal. He's hardly uh, a Kemp anymore. I have never heard Jack Kemp utter a critical word 
about anybody in the black community. Now, that is a form of racism in itself. And, I'm, and I've said, I've written this. Uh, you why know, is Jacob a, a, a racist? Because I he said it's a form. Wait a minute, I, David, why, why are we, wait a minute, why are we dancing to his tune here? Because we're on defense here, and I just laid out a scenario where yeah, I mean, Sean Hannity spoke, is a if I spoke to the... Look, Louis Farrakhan's religion teaches that white people... The reason, why you're under the, the reason why you're under defensive is because you're dealing because with... Because you're dis- good, is that why? Not I mean, because you're dealing with disproportionality. No, the but, fact of the matter is... Many of us have taken issue with things that Minister Farrakhan has done, have, have said. The fact of the matter is there's a big, yeah, huge he's a racist gap. racist kook for there's a huge years. Gap. He's a black Hitler, Louis Farrakhan. There's a, it Hitler the, uh, itself the, uh, was involved in the execution and extermination of Jews. Louis Farrakhan, for it, all of his rhetoric, and some of which I disagree with very strongly, is he a racist? Never been involved is he in a racist? Scenario. No, he's not a racist. Is he an anti-Semite? He has said anti-Semitic things. He certainly has. Okay, but he's not a racist when he calls the and white man the women. skunk of the planet Earth? Well, I mean, you know, I, I Deal think with that's that, Mr. I think Daniels, I agree with that. If, if I Mr. Think, Horowitz said, said the black I man think, is the skunk of the planet Earth, we would all condemn him as a racist. Well, you well, are proving well, all, the not, premise of his book is true. I don't feel necessary to rise up and disagree with and be responsible for everything. The white man is said. the skunk I of the planet Earth? With, I disagree with that statement. And I stand oh, okay. on my own record and he's not a racist. my mouth in terms of what I stand for. <laughs> as does a Jesse Jackson, as what does a Al Sharpton, and anybody else. You know, we've re- derailed the, uh, All right, hang the discussion. We've got to take a break. The real point is I'm taking a break, whether you both like it or not. 1-800-848-WABC. We'll continue. David Horowitz's new book. Hating Whitey, Amazon.com or bookstores near you. Ron Daniels is with us, Executive Director, Center for Constitutional Rights. It's the Sean Hannity Show. Please tell your friends about us in 77 WABC. But now I've been Well, I wanted to talk about this, you know, um, it's disproportionate, as though the Ku Klux Klan is the major force in American life, and uh, the Nation of Islam is just a, you know, little swamp fringe. Uh, Louis Farrakhan can fill Madison Square Garden. Uh, I'd be amazed if David Duke gets uh, 5,000 people or 500 in New York, and if he does, isn't outnumbered by counter-demonstrators by like 10 to 1, I will be surprised. The other thing is the idea that the, for Farrakhan it's only words. There are 1.4 million uh, crimes of uh, violent interracial crimes in America committed every year, and 85% of crimes of interracial violence are committed by blacks against whites. It's a very serious problem. Do I this is, that? Not, hmm? this uh, is not the focus of my book, however. The focus of my book is the fact that when we deal with this phantom idea, this idea that racism, white racism is somehow responsible for all the pro- problems that blacks experience in America, we deprive ourselves of dealing with the problems, and particularly the black community deprives itself of looking at problems that only it can solve. There's no other community that can fix the black family, which has disintegrated in the inner city and is responsible uh, mainly for this criminal behavior and for the failure of black children, uh, you know, to perform well uh, in academic pursuits and therefore to get ahead. Well, obviously that's a fair topic for the conversation, and I want to obviously comment on that. But I want to go back to this question of proportionality, because the question is, if you look at the Knights, Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, we just had recently a wave of church burnings. In fact, church arsons are still going on, and the Center for Constitutional Rights has been working with other organizations around that. Several, there are several cases and instances of the Ku Klux, the Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, who were found guilty of, of uh, burning churches. The fact of the matter is, you have no equivalent of a African American organization dragging a James Bird, as was done in Texas, and lynching. Uh, this man. There well, is no, no instance. There is no, no instance. I, mean, I may not be familiar. No, there, no, there, there is, is no there instance of it. Because because what organization lynched James Byrd? You had a group of white supremacists. You had a, you had a, a group couple of, of, you had a, of, 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 you know, deranged losers who did it. Yeah, but where are the deranged white, losers white, in the black city that are lynching white people? Where are they? And where's the long history? There were 40, nearly uh, between 30 and 40,000 black people lynched in this country in the last uh, century. Well, actually, no, there were there there no 3,000 lynchings. There's no pattern of, actually, of, of black actually, people lynching white people in this country. I, I, is know, there that, a pattern of black I, people lynching you know, white people in this country? Hang on, Mr. Answer Daniels. Question, Mr. Horowitz. We gotta there, let, are there are 3,000 official lynchings that are known in this country of blacks, 
And they were, are you uh, kidding me? You've got to be in La La Land. Oh, about 4,000 of whites. The, 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 the data the more whites were are lynched are than blacks. Over 30,000 black people were lynched in this country. All right. And I'll tell you what, we're getting, gentlemen, I'll tell you what. Hold on, hold on. We're, gonna, we're getting off topic. We're getting way off topic. We'll come back. We'll take a deep breath. We'll get back on topic when we come back. And uh, when we get back, also, we'll get to your phone calls, 1-800-848-WABC. David Horowitz, author of the book, Hating Whitey, Other Progressive Causes. Ron Daniels, executive director for the Center for Constitutional Rights. Now, also, uh, there is a specific charge of cocaine abuse and George W. Bush. We'll deal with that issue coming up on the program today. John Sterling will be talking Yankee baseball later on in the program. So we've got a lot more ground to cover. 1-800-848-WABC. David Horowitz is with us. His uh, new book, Hating Whitey, Other Progressive Causes, and Ron Daniels is the executive director for the Center for Constitutional Rights. Mr. Daniels, when you hear the title of uh, David Horowitz's book, Hating Whitey, what do you think? Outdated anachronism. I mean, nobody uses the term whitey anymore. Isn't that? I mean, I, don't, I, I haven't heard a person use that term in... Ages, but but you understand what he means. I well, mean, it dates him. It certainly lets us know that he was from the 60s because there were, <laughs> there were times when black people would use that term in the 60s, but it's no longer... Well, what, is, what, do you, what, is, what, is white, what are white people called now? Well, you basically don't hear. I, oh. I think that's, that's a positive sign that, by and large, most activists don't use uh, language that, are, that is denigrating. And I certainly have been... Well, I've, just, I've, just written, I've just written recently written an article entitled uh, speak, uh, speak About Others As You Would Have Others Speak About You, the golden rule of political discourse. So many of us uh, discourage mm -hmm. the use of any kind of disparaging all right, language no, I, towards I, We may agree on that. David, David Horowitz, um, well, first of all, you had, let me just congratulate you. Not only did you have a hard time getting a uh, publisher, but then you're already in your second printing and the book was just released. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, there's a big demand out there. Um, and I, I hope it continues. I, I, I think the bookstores are, are having a hard time stocking the books. So I wish people would call them and see if they have the book. Um, you know, the, in, in every college in America, um, uh, young students are taught that white people, um, white males in particular, are oppressors, uh, that America is a racist, sexist, uh, oppressive country. Um, and I don't care if they, you know, my original title actually was Hating White People. Um, but some people thought that was offensive, so I changed it to hating whitey, which is is the term that was used. It's certainly more marketable. In the 60s. Well, hey, it's a title. Um, but again, we're not really discussing what the issue... The, the first is that there is... You know, people can just get away... The, let, let's put it this way. The affirmative action, the whole system on which uh, racial preferences are based, assumes that white people are so unfair they have to be forced to be fair by the government. And therefore, we have to give racial privileges to certain groups that the left designates. There's only about four or five groups that get so, so designated. This is a libel on, uh, on white America. The reality is that the affirmative action laws were put into place by Richard Nixon, a Republican, that white America has done, you know, gone many, many miles to try to redress the grievances that uh, the black community expresses. Um, and that we have reached, you know, the, an, an end point, or we reached it really long ago. There is no way that rigging uh, tests, the, you know, the entrance requirements for college is going to help uh, the those members of the African American community uh, and other minorities communities that really need it. Because what uh, they need well. is to have fathers in the home. What they need is to have, uh, you know, schools, public schools at the elementary school level that are teaching them. You know, even, and but David, now, all that, you, David, need, you need to break the grip of the teachers' unions and the... But uh, there is, there is a point, maybe, on maybe, problem. hang on a second, Mr. Daniels, but David brings up a good point. Uh, I looked at the illegitimacy rate in the black community uh, prior to the Civil Rights Act in 64, uh, Ron, it's four times higher today in the black community at a time when there was institutionalized discrimination and racism was rampant. Uh, far more than today, I mean, there's still this breakdown in the, in the, in the well, black the, community in terms of its family. I mean, does well, David not have a valid point? Well, there's substantial data that also indicates that the, there's a dramatic, even greater uh, incidence uh, these days uh, in, in, in 
uh, white single female households than there is in the black community. What kind of an answer is that? I mean, well, they, well, no, wait, because the point is uh -huh, that, that more, the question, more white guys, are, more white girls are doing this. I, we were talking no, about the, the black community. That, I'm not. I'm not disputing your numbers about the white community well, have but, but similarly been I mean, rising. To, it, it, but I mean, but uh, but my point. Question becomes. Well, you don't want to. You don't want to hear my the, point. Well, no, but you asked. Because but but the, the point question? is, why, why when there the was discrimination, w did, there wasn't the problem with the breakdown of the family, which is David's point? Well, you know, yeah, there are a lot of reasons that deal with that. Most, not the, there are several trends at play here. First of all, you know, moving out of the rural south into the uh, urban industrial areas, uh, you know, one found the pressures of uh, the last hired, the first to be hired, a number of factors that put se severe pressures on the black family. But, but it's but also true that black the, uh, people are part of the... Wouldn't you, would you, let, let's see if we get agreement. Would you agree uh, that racism uh, has little or nothing to do no, I don't with, agree the with, that because, of, no, with the failure all. of African Americans to qualify to go to Harvard, Yale, and other elite colleges? No, because what? I think that uh, racism plays and will continue to play for quite some time. You mean there are racists in the admissions offices at Harvard and Yale? Well, I think that, well, yes, there are racists. There are racists. I mean, there's all kind of data out there, Mr. Horace, which you apparently want to ignore, that suggests that racism is still very much alive in American society. Well, is it as bad as it was? Give me the data as it relates to Harvard. 25 years ago? No. But is it still there? Well, well, well yes. look, I mean, you can assert anything you like. Tell me. Well, no, I'm not asserting it. That tell means me why the, the black newspaper, students, newspaper article it, studies are abound. There are with, no, look, there is nobody that has accused anybody, any admissions officer, at, let's just stick with Yale and Harvard, of being a racist. There is no evidence whatsoever that there's a bias against black applicants to Harvard and Yale on the basis of race. The, the, uh, the, the racial bias is against Asians and it's against whites in behalf of blacks. No, I think I think the what, problem what, is no, that black a, students are too, they there don't is, score well on the test. That's well, the problem. Well, there there are reasons why blacks don't score well on the test. To be What's sure, that? but there's also well, 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 what, what, what are the reasons? Something particular. What, what are the reasons? The reason what they don't score well on tests. Well, there a lot of there's a lot of indicators that there is cultural bias in the in the uh, questioning. Not only the questioning in the questions themselves. But well, the how come that doesn't affect the Vietnamese kids who come here, can't speak English, and come from a completely foreign culture? Why is the why is the bias not stop them from going to Harvard and Yale? Because the Vietnamese who come to this to this country have come out of an entirely different uh, historical experience than African Americans, and still. African American. Yeah, but, but wait a second. No, 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 you you mean the minute, people minute, who minute, designed minute, the minute. test? Wait a second. Let me Let's talk, talk about racism. racism. No, I'm going to give you racism. Are you saying the people who designed the test racism designed it to keep out blacks Horowitz. but not the Vietnamese? Racism 101. It is a colloquialism that goes in the black community. It goes something like this. If you're white, you're all right. Yellow, mellow, brown, stick around. Black, get back. In a New York Newsday that's article in New York City, it indicated that black and people paranoia. in this country are the least preferred minority. Oh, come black on. Black people this are the ones who carry like, the this brunt is of racism more heavily than anybody else uh, in this society. You know, give me a break. Look, no, I'm giving just you because, a break. Just because, uh, you, you know, there's a I'm paranoia you a out there. Because you, you, you probably have no clue about the history of racism, how it came into existence, what its origins are, what its definitions are. What you want to do, Mr. Hart, is we hang on. We're on a factual issue, and you can can't handle Those the fact that racists out clear. there who want to go and buy right, your We'll book. take a break. Identified oh. himself as Jewish before another woman. All right. Well, as run. David? Run. Yes. Why, why are you, you know, I think you're losing your self-respect by being, you know, in this circus. All well, right, you're you know listening what? to you're the circus, so uh, you're you know, wasting there are a lot of people listen to the program. And Got us in the summit. Have a vacuum it's for the free so place of ideas, and we were, you know, and it's a good exchange. Uh, is this... What is this, Goddess? Good afternoon. Is that your name? Yes, it is, Sean. How are you, Goddess? Oh, I'm feeling good, baby, but my butt is burning. Why is your butt burning? <laughs> what has Mr. Horowitz been smoking? Ooh. It's obvious that he's in denial. That's an acronym for don't even know I'm lying. And, 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 you know, like, he seems to forget. See, blacks were not brought over. We were drug over. Well, you know, listen. I know he thinks we're here on a club med vacation, but that's not true. Well, you, you know, look, the, the reality is this. If America, it, you, it's true, you were brought over in chains. It was a terrible crime. Correct. It's a, very, it's a free country now. It has open borders. If America were oppressing black people, as Ron and you, I'm sure, will claim, if America is such a racist country, uh, why aren't a lot of blacks 
finding better countries to live in. Why do all the Haitians want to come here? Honey, they want to come here. I'll answer the question. Forty acres and a mule. Got us. Got us. Let him finish I mean, the point. Come on, wine, wine. Uh, you know, the, for, I'm you not know, whining. I'm not you know, it's it. forty acres no, and a mule. Uh, people who are in the country because poverty is relative. That's why. You want to talk about denial? You want to talk about denial? Hold on. Hold on. All right. You know what? Hold on. One at a time. Let him. Let him. But if people want to talk about denial. You know, deny the fact that black people in America are better off than 90% of the world's population generally, and than any black uh, community anywhere else in, in the world, including all the black one countries. Well, how, that's how the you first push thing. That conclusion? The second thing is that 40 acres in a well, that's not true. Slavery, slavery, which was a great crime, happened a very long time ago. 90% of the people who live in this country who are not black were not here then. Honey, the if major, I said to you... 90% of the people that they put in the ovens at Auschwitz, they were just a victim of circumstance. You would be offended by that. Well, I never the said that. Well, your race has well, never apologized just, for bringing look, us over here. You know, look, maybe, maybe you just don't hear when I talk. I said slavery was a great crime. I didn't say it was a matter of circumstance. Well, if anything, I said you need to be telling what you're living going in to the do 21st. to apologize for what right, hang you on, let, to mind. All right. Well, well, well not only was it a great crime. Thank you, God. I appreciate it. Listen, not only was it a great crime. You know, I, that, I Mr. can't Horowitz. stand that, that crap of what my people did to hers. <laughs> there were more, uh, you know, it's not crap, Farrakhan, Farrakhan's anti-Semitic, uh, you know, nonsense you know, coming home to roost. There were more black slave owners than there were uh, Jews that owned slaves. So what the heck is she talking about? Well, I, I don't know. I, and I, I, I am got, sick I of got, this. I, Jews as a community have done more for black people than any community in America, including blacks, have, have done for anybody else. That's the reality. They, they funded, they strategized, they organized, and they died for the civil rights movement. I've spent 50 years in the struggle for equal rights, mainly uh, uh, struggles for black people in, in this country. My friends have been killed, uh, you know, and I just am sick and tired of black anti-Semitism. It should stop. Uh, anyway, I've said enough. I'm, I'm just fed up. Well, I, on, on the crime of slavery, Mr. Horowitz, not only was it a crime, the point is, that one does history and what happens in history doesn't sort of stop in one period conveniently. There's such things as intergenerational benefits and intergenerational deficits for those things that happen in history. For example, the fact that black people were enslaved or the fact that black people, certain jobs for so many years in America were set aside exclusively for white people meant that black people were denied and that those people who got the jobs could intergenerationally pass on the benefits to their progeny so that they would have an upward mobile position in this society. These are sort of complex ideas, Mr. Horowitz, that are kind of hard for people who simply want to, you know, like, take demagogic positions to understand. So it's not just that it was a crime right, in the on. past. All right, hang it's on. a question we of the impact that it has had and continues to have. All right, because now, let me give, uh, hang on a second, let me give David a chance to respond while we have... Yeah, uh, I mean, this is the problem. This is, the, to me... It's a, it's a real tragedy that the black community has been, you know, is being strangled by this kind of left-wing ideology because its mind is just set in the, in the total path. Uh, there isn't a community, you know, it's a, of course bad things were done to blacks. Of course they were excluded from jobs. Jews can right, say the we'll, same thing. We'll take a break. More with, the same thing. More with David you know, Horowitz in our next hour. We'll that really struck me. A conversation with somebody who used to be a friend of mine. Uh, you know, he was a left, well, he was pretty left-wing, but he said the one thing he despised about people that were left-wing like himself is they really hated America. That's right. It was a, and, and uh, you know, it's the other side of this idea of black people are brought here in chains, there's nothing but discrimination, uh, uh, you know, the, the, if you're black, stay back. I mean, the, the idea that there are, uh, that Ron Daniels was suggesting earlier that there might be, uh, admissions officers at Harvard and Yale who are plotting and, and uh, at the testing service, the national testing service, they're plotting to construct tests that will uh, let Vietnamese and Cambodian immigrants score high on the tests while keeping black scores down is insane. I mean, nobody in his right mind can actually believe this, well, but here's you tell that to people the way, uh, you know, in a, uh, you know but, but you know, this guy was an articulate we, guy. 
uh, you know, it makes them think that they're, that they're whites are plotting always to, uh, to keep black people down. But here's one thing that I want to just sort of run uh, piggyback on your point here. And, you know, I remember when they were having the debate about Proposition 209 out in California, which would, uh, you know, prevent uh, uh, benefits uh, or preferences for uh, race and, and gen gender and so on and so forth. Uh, in discrimination, it would be reverse discrimination in hiring and contracting and so on. Um, and I just remember that debate, and I remember one statistic, and I remember talking with Ward Connolly about this. It just stuck out in my mind that because of Prop 209 and preference programs in California, there were, on an average, every year, 700 better qualified Asian students who were denied access to the university system out there, the college system out there, even though they had better grades, better GPA scores, uh, and better SAT scores. Right, and it, but the other side of it is the tragedy for blacks.